Hi, my name is Brittany J. Jones. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to finish an armhole using bias tape. Let's get started. To demonstrate a bias tape armhole, I'm gonna be using this bodice here. For the bias tape, I'm gonna be using a half an inch wide single fold bias tape. So as you can see, this is what the tape looks like and these are the ends of the tape folded in like so. Before we apply the bias tape, it's important to note that if your bodice front and back pattern pieces are used for both a sleeveless view as well as a sleeves view, then we would need to trim away a quarter of an inch from along our armhole. So for example, if the pattern you're working on, if view A has sleeves and view D is sleeveless and it's only one bodice for it, only one front and back bodice, then you would need to trim away a quarter of an inch. But it's important to always look at all your pattern pieces because in some patterns you will have a bodice for sleeveless patterns and you will have a bodice for sleeve patterns. I'm going to be attaching this bias tape as though this is made for a sleeveless garment. The first thing that we want to do is open out one edge of our bias tape. You can press this open if you like. I'm gonna come along here to the side of the bodice. This is my side seam here, and this is where I'm going to begin. So with the right sides facing, this is the right side of my bias tape here. The folds again are right here on the inside. And I'm going to turn under this edge of the bias tape so that that fold right here that I turned over matches up with the side seam. So you don't just wanna place your bias tape like this when you're starting. Again, make sure that you fold under, grab some pins, and we're gonna pin in place, making sure that we have our bias tape lined up with the raw edges of the bodice. So as you can see here, I have everything lined up. It's not down, it's right there on the edge. Go ahead and continue pinning in place. Okay, once we get back over here to the side where we started, we're not gonna turn under this one here. We're just gonna lap it over like so. And we don't need all of this. I'm gonna grab my scissors and just trim some of this away. And I'm just gonna pin the rest in place. Once you have yours pinned in place, we can go to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch this in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, I have just sewn on my bias tape to my armhole, so yours should look similar to this. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and trim our seam. So go ahead and grab your scissors. If you did not press this side of the bias tape open when we started to pin it, it does make a big difference now when it's time to trim. So if you want to press it open to keep it from folding in on you, you can go ahead and press it open. That way you can get a really nice clean trim around your seam. Now that we have it trimmed, now we can go ahead and clip into our curves. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. These clips are gonna help everything to lay nice and flat once we fold our bias tape to the inside. So be sure that you do this clipping that will help to eliminate some of the bulk along the curves. Be sure not to clip through your seam here just clip to it. Once you have done your clipping, the next thing that you want to do is go ahead and press your bias tape going out away from your bodice like so. And we want to do some understitching. The understitching will help to keep everything to the inside of the garment. It's a stitch that we stitch really close to the seam right here. You see it in facings and you see it in linings as well as bias tape. And again, it just helps to keep everything nice and clean on the inside of the garment. So first I'm gonna go ahead and press my bias tape out, making sure that I press the seam allowance out as well. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once we have it pressed out, then we can do our understitch. I've given it a press, so as you can see, everything is pressed out, the seam allowance 
is also pressed out here along the inside. So now we can go ahead and do our row of understitching. Okay, next we need to go to our ironing station again. You want to go ahead and just press your bias tape toward the inside like so. Give it a good press. And after you have it pressed, then we can do a row of basting stitching here along this edge of the bias tape so that we can get ready to do our top stitching. So first you wanna go ahead and do your press, press it to the inside, get everything nice, neat, and clean. Then you would do your row of basting stitches right here along the edge of the bias tape all the way around. Then you can do your top stitch along the right side of your fabric. Let's go ahead and press it in place now and do our basting stitch and then our top stitch. Okay, I've just pressed this to the inside. So now we can go ahead and baste along the inner edge of the bias tape. And again, after you like the way it looks, there's no puckers or pulls, then you can follow along with your basting stitch on the right side of your fabric with a top stitch. All right, after you've done your top stitch, you wanna go ahead and remove your basting stitch, clip away any loose threads that you have, and then you can give it one final press. Okay, I've just given it a final press, and this is what the end result look like. Again, you have your understitch here, and you have your top stitch. This is what the inside of it looks like down here where we tucked under and lapped over our seam. And you have a really nice clean finish here on your armhole using bias tape.